3, Lesson 13. Today we are using fraction benchmarking numbers, okay, and I'm going to explain what that means, benchmarking numbers, to assess reasonableness of addition and subtraction equations. So reasonableness, right, basically means that we are going to estimate. We're estimating. And in order to estimate, we are going to use benchmark numbers. So those numbers that you know what they are. So the big one, of course, is half, but maybe a, a quarter is also there, or three quarters, okay? These are numbers that you recognize and you know what's bigger or smaller than a half, a quarter, or three quarters. So I'm going to put this like this because one-fourth and one-half and three-quarters in order on a number line, right? So, okay, let's get right started. Uh, learn pages, lesson 13. We're going to do this together. I'm, I'm going to admit to you right now, this is not my favorite lesson because estimating fractions is very difficult and we don't do it very often. So let's see what we can do here. Okay. So, remember I said benchmark fractions? So you're going to look for things that you recognize. Things like one-fourth, one-half, uh, three-fourths, things that you, when you see them, you know how much that means, right? So you know that one-fourth, if this was a circle, one-fourth would be here, one-half would be here, and three-fourths, there's our one half and three fourths would be three out of four okay so what we're going to try and do is if we were to add those up estimating would they be greater than one or less than one so all you need to do is circle which one okay so one half you already know what one half is right you already know that's a half is this two sevenths bigger than a half or smaller than a half two sevenths well you know that on a number line, 0 to 7, halfway would be 3 and a half, right? Or 3.5. So 2.7, is that going to be more than a half or less than a half? It's less than a half. So if, that's, if you have your half here, and then you have less than half, it's actually going to be about like probably like that. Is your answer going to be bigger or greater than a whole? So here it's going to be less than one. So your answer for A is less than one. I hope that was clear. This is a little bit tricky, so we're going to go through all of them together, okay? So those are the benchmarks fractions that you're looking for. Number two, I'm going to erase this here too. Number two, five-eighths and three-fifths. Okay, think about that. Five-eighths. Five-eighths is bigger or smaller than half. Four-eighths equals one-half. So this is bigger than one-half. And three out of five, well, 2.5 is half of five. So that's bigger than a half as well. So bigger than a half and bigger than a half is going to give you an answer that is greater than one-half. Okay, here's C. 1 minus 1 4, or 1 and 1 fourth minus 1 third. Now the question here is 1 fourth bigger or smaller than 1 third? So think about it this way. Here's fourths and here's thirds. Thirds are bigger than fourths. So is this going to be greater than 1 or less than 1? Well, I think it's going to be less than 1 because if you subtract this third from 1, it's going to be less. Okay. 3 and 5 eighths, so 5 eighths, you know 4 eighths is 1 half, remember? We put that right there. And 2 and 5 nines, well, 5 nines is also bigger than 1 half. So if we were to kind of round that, 3 and a half minus 2 and a half, is it going to be greater than 1 or less than 1? Well, if we were rounding it, we'd get one, right? So let's look at it a little bit more closely. This is a little bit bigger than a half, and this is slightly less bigger than a half, but still bigger than a half. 
So I think that our, actually our answer is going to be greater than 1, but it's really close. And actually, if you just put equals 1 on that one, I would probably give it to you because um, they're asking us to be a little bit more specific than we need to be for estimating. Next one. Are the following expressions greater than or less than 1 half? Okay, so now we're going to really be looking at fourths and thirds as our benchmark, benchmark fractions. So if that's a fourth, right, this would be a fourth, and this would be a third. One third is a little bit bigger than one fourth, isn't it, size-wise? So think of it that way. If you want to look at it on a timeline, okay, if this is one and this is zero, this is one fourth, one half, and three fourths. Now I'm going to draw in the thirds with the different colors so you can see it a little bit better. Um, thirds would be about here and here, and this would be one third and two thirds. Okay? So let's see. If that's our number line and these are our, our models. Okay. Are the following fractions greater than or less than one half? Okay, well you know that this is half of one half and this is bigger than one half. So is it going to be, right? So here's this one, but then over here we've got an entire two thirds, right? So is one-fourth enough to fill that one-third? Not quite. So it's less, than, it's less than one, but it's not asking if it's, if it's less than one. It's asking if it's less than a half. And it is definitely greater than a half. We know that right away because two-thirds is greater than a half. Look, two-thirds is bigger than one-half. We already know that. Next, three-sevenths minus one-eighth. Okay, well, let me draw one-eighths into this number line over here. So there, there, uh, there, and there. So that would be one eighth, and this would be two eighths, and that would be three eighths right there. This would be four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, okay? Hope you can read that. So one eighth is all the way down here. It's little. It's little. So three sevens is going to be less than half minus something even smaller than half. Okay? So it's definitely less than half. One and one seventh minus seven eighths. Well, seven eighths is almost a half. If we were to add up, we'd have one eighth left plus one seventh. One seventh plus one eighth is not going to equal a half, so that's also less than half. Three sevens is less than half, and two sixes is also less than half. Okay, but together, less than half and less than half, I still think, because that would be one third, so that's here, and Three sevens would be just a little bit more. I think that that's going to be bigger than one half. So we're going to mark that one there. That one's really close too. Okay, now greater than less than. Here's our estimation in context. Okay, so five plus three is already eight, right? And two thirds plus three fourths, well, one fourth more would give you four, and one third more would give you five. So that's almost 10, right? And here's this two-thirds right here. So you already know that this one is going to be bigger, okay? So if we could cross that off on both sides, and five, six, seven, eight, and three-fourths, and on this side we just had eight, right? Because if you cross it off on the left, you can cross it off on the right. Ooh, so let's try and do that again. Look at that. Ooh, we can cross that one off and cross this one off. And cross this one off and cross that one off. Here we've got one and one. Huh? Ah, look at that. That's nice. Okay, here, let's just quickly pop that into 7 fourteenths, okay? Right here, and here you can do this really quickly, 6 fourteenths. So that's 6 plus 7 is 12, is 13 fourteenths plus 6. 
6 and 13 14 oh, equals. Okay. Ooh, we're, we're on a roll now. We're on a roll. Okay, so I'm going to take this one from here and this one from here. And I'm going to take that one from there and that one from there. Now I have 4 and 4. So I can make an equal sign there too. All right. Am I, am I doing that one right? Let me just double check that. Let me double check my answers because that seemed like I got that answer pretty quickly. Let's just double check. I'm going to do the actual math on this one. So if this, this would be 35 would be my common denominator. And that would be 14. And this would be 20. So I've got 4 and 34 35s. Okay. And here... This would be 15 and, what did I say, 20, 35s, minus 11 and 14, 35s. So that would give me 4 and 6, 35s. Oh, yeah, see, I did get to that answer too quickly. Look at that. Okay, well, 4 and 6, 35s is smaller than 4 and, and 34, if it, uh, 34, 35s. Let's see how I did over here. Did I do okay over here? Six? Yes, that's definitely. But I think I did number uh, B wrong too. So let's do redo that one too. I knew I was getting to those answers too quickly. Okay, so this would be five and eight, be 40. So this is uh, estimating uh, going to be about two, and this estimating is going to be about one and a half. So I think, there we go. All right. Now remember, we're just estimating, so uh, you don't have to go crazy doing the math. But if you have a question like I did, uh, you can go ahead and do the full math. But uh, we are estimating. Don't just guess. Estimate, right? using your benchmark fractions. Is it true that 5 and 3 fifths minus 3 and 2 thirds equals 1 plus 3 fifths plus 2 thirds? Hmm. Okay, well it says prove our answer, so we are definitely going to have to do this, um, this problem. So let's do this. 4 and we're going to make our common denominator 15. So that's going to be 9 fifteenths minus 3 and 10 fifteenths. Okay. Now I'm going to have to borrow because do you see that 4 there? So I'm going to cross that 4 out. I'm going to make it 3. And then 15 plus 9 is 24 fifteenths minus 3 and 10 fifteenths equals 3 and 14 fifteenths. Okay. Now let's do this side and see if it comes up to the right answer. So here we're going to do 1 plus 9 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths equals 1 and then 19 fifteenths. Well, then that is an improper fraction. We're going to change that to 2 and 4 fifteenths. Are they equal? No, they're not. They are not equal. Okay, number five. Jackson needs to be one and three quarters inches taller in order to ride the roller coaster. Since he can't wait, he puts on a pair of boots <laughs> that adds one and one sixth inches to his height and slips an insole inside to add another one-eighth of an inch to his height. Will this make Jackson appear tall enough to ride the roller coaster? So this is the number we, we're looking for, one and three quarters. So let's add one and one-sixth plus, so there's the boots, plus one-eighth of an inch here equals, and our common denominator will be 24. Okay, so that would be four. 4 24s plus 3 24s, is that right? Yes. Plus 1 equals 1 and 7 24s. 
Well, one and three quarters, we've got the one inch there, but does seven twenty-fours equal three quarters? Mm -mm. Because seven twenty-fours is less than less than three quarters. If I were to uh, do three quarters here, I can I I know that it's less because I'm estimating, but I can prove it to you. I can divide this by six, or I can multiply this by six. So let's do that times six times six equals 18 over 24. Do you see how this is still bigger than that? Is that going to be enough? Will this make Jackson appear tall enough to ride the roller coaster? Sorry, buddy. Not tall enough. Monteroso. Okay, a baker needs five pounds of butter for a recipe. She found two portions that weigh one and one sixth pound and a portion that weighs two and two sevenths pounds. Does this have enough butter for her recipe? Okay, two portions of 1.6. So what we're doing is two times one and one sixth. Okay, so if we're multiplying, two times one is two. And two times two six is two sixes, okay. Then a portion that weighs two and two sevens. Oh, we're getting closer. But is this gonna be five? One, two, three, four. This is not a half and that is not a half. So this is definitely gonna be less than five pounds. Does she have enough butter for her recipe? No, she doesn't. We don't have to figure out the rest because we know that this is two sixes is also equal to one third, which is less than half. And two sevenths is definitely less than half. Okay, so if less than half and less than half is not going to equal five, is it? Does not have enough. That's a bummer. I hope they're Christmas cookies. Okay, um, your, there, that's the end of the problem set. We're doing a lot of estimation. Look at the exit ticket, and you can see that the number one is that we're correcting the right answer there. One half plus five, six, is that going to be greater than or less than one? Remember, think of this in terms of halves. Six, six twelves would equal one half. And one half plus one half is equals one. So is this going to be greater than or less than one? I'm not going to give you the answer, but so you're going to do that for all of them. You're estimating, and down here, okay. You're also going to estimate, but I think that you can see almost see the answer right there. I know I can almost see the answer. Okay, so do that. Do the exit ticket, and then come back and finish your lesson 13 homework. Great. Thank you.